You know, it is really a problem, the shortage of skills in the market. Um, when I meet uh, CISOs uh, from our customers, uh, they often talk about a lot of technical challenges that they have, uh, the complexity that is increased, but all of them, and I mean all of them, if they have one thing in common, they also complain about an additional challenge that they have, uh, which is a non-technical challenge, and it's about the shortage of skills. If you look at the different research that have been done recently, we're talking about millions of jobs that will be open in the next few years, and there's just not enough talent in the market to fulfill them. So our customers really struggle because they have more complexity, more demand coming from the business, but they just don't have enough people to do that. You know, it's um, basic rules of economics, right? You have high demand and not enough offering. In this case, we've seen an increased demand and that demand happened very quickly. Uh, in the course of just a few years. So high demand in the market for skills in cybersecurity, not enough talent, but, but why is that? Why not enough talent? So first of all, dealing with cybersecurity is very complex. Uh, it requires a lot of knowledge in, in multiple different disciplines. So let's say uh, you might need some ethical hackers or you might need some identity and access management experts or SOC analysts. These are different disciplines that require different trainings, different knowledge. So it's a very complex problem to solve. In addition, uh, just recently we started seeing uh, studies, trainings becoming available to get people trained up and skilled up to, to do this kind of job. That wasn't even available in the market before. So not enough training available in the past, high complexity and high demand that was created very quickly. These are the core reasons for, for the problem that we see right now in the market. Well, new technologies like artificial intelligence or machine learning, they, they can definitely help, right? They can reduce maybe some of the uh, workload, or they can support some very sophisticated analytics that we need to do that manually doing is just not possible, but they cannot replace uh, the human eye or the intelligence that we bring in identifying problems. So if we look, for example, in a SOC environment where we need to look for the needle in the haystack, uh, those technologies are very good in identifying anomalies, but you still need a person who's curious enough, knowledgeable enough, that we look at what seems to be an anomaly and help us dictate. Is this a problem or not, and, and what are we going to do about it? We are doing multiple things uh, on several fronts. One thing that we do is reskilling of our own employees. Uh, we are lucky to be uh, a very mature organization that has been active in the network and communication space for quite some time. So we have a, a large pool of very talented people that are ready to do the next step and, and do a career change and really move into this area of cybersecurity, which is really growing and exciting at the moment. Uh, we also work on graduate programs that allow us to provide entry-level jobs for people that are that just recently graduated for universities and it's a global program that allows us to open new jobs entry level all over the world. We give them also some rotation options so they can really try and taste the different flavors of doing cybersecurity in different roles. And another thing important to mention, diversity initiatives. Uh, with this enormous lack of skills in the market, uh, we have to open the doors for some communities that are not well represented in the working force in, in, in the technology environment. Uh, women, for example, but also other groups of people. And, and this is a great opportunity to participate, grow, and also have more inclusion and diversity. Mm -hmm.